This is my 1960s uh, milling machine that I have upgraded with CNC controls on all three axes and I've added a fourth axis that also has uh, CNC on it which is just basic stepper motors, no feedback, nothing fancy and running Mach 3 on a uh, standard PC that I've got up here. So inside the cabinet, this is a cabinet that came with the machine when I first got it but it just had uh, motor controls and stuff in it. So I've got uh, gecko drives across the top for X, Y, and Z, and uh, have the fourth axis there as well. And I used to run uh, controls early on directly from the parallel port on the computer. That old, yeah, that old parallel port that nobody has anymore on, on computers. So when I got a new computer, I had to step up to a smooth stepper and I went with the Ethernet cable version, and they've got two different versions on there. You can look into that. And then uh, rather than messing around with plugs, I decided to go with this uh, breakout board that allows me to have screw terminals. That was a CNC PC uh, board there. And that's been really handy. That's uh, worked out really well. And then I also used to run the whole thing off of just some hand-me-down power supply that I got that was only at uh, like 24 volts or something, but now I went and sourced these uh, various power supplies and I'm running uh, running the stepper motors clear up around 70 volts. I think I'll have to I'll have to look up and see what I did. And then I've got a little 5 volt DC power supply that powers the um, smooth stepper and some of the inputs here offers power to the um, to the relays, and I ran outputs. This, this was a really nice uh, upgrade for me. Was to use a, you can get these um, aircraft plugs. These are a four prong aircraft plug that uh, a whole bag of them for really cheap off of Amazon. And they I can't remember the amperage, but you know maybe five amps or something like that per pin. Um, so those are really nice to run the wires down and be able to, if I want to take this entire panel out of the back, I can unplug each of the uh, each of the stepper drives there and take this whole thing out, although I, I may have added a couple of things in here. Uh, the relays that I've got, I have this relay tied to the um, some of the outputs from the uh, breakout board and the smooth stepper so I can use it to switch coolant on and off, though I don't plan on running coolant with this. So right now I've got these connected up that I can uh, take this plug on the side and plug it into the back of my plasma cutter. And I just went internally to the plasma cutter and uh, connected into the uh, trigger switch. And that way I can use this to uh, CNC cut with my plasma, which has been really nice. And then I've also tied in a couple of other wires that I've ran there. I'm, I'm connecting that up to a little laser that we'll look at later. It's only a little half watt sucker, but it uh, does a really nice job on engraving wood, if you will, burning burning the wood. The other thing I've done, I used to work in a place that had uh, computers in a sandblasting room that was constantly had sand everywhere. So I've learned to have a fan that's blowing air out of the cabinet and pulling air in somewhere else. So I've I punched a bunch of holes and put a little, uh, just using a simple piece of an air filter from uh, from the hardware store that you would normally put in your central uh, air system just on the registers around the floor and so I have it pulling through one of those and then it just blows whatever air was in here out through the with a big computer fan um, oh yeah and I also set up this little uh, green plug over there is screw terminals that I have a, uh, a DB9 cable going to a box with uh, my limit switches, or basically homing switches. So let's go ahead and turn this on. You can see all the blinking lights and come on here. And we're powered up. Now this is the fan side of the box. You can see I've got the uh, little power insert here. I basically hacked out this whole rectangle of the box 
and then uh, that allowed me to work on this aluminum insert separately and put in uh, CNC in the the jack for the homing switches and uh, punch the hole. All that stuff allowed me to do it separately on the on the milling machine itself. Uh, of course, I just used a uh, a stepped step drill bit to punch in the various uh, holes here for the aircraft plugs for the for the A and the X, Y, and Z axis, and of course this other auxiliary plug that I uh, run into my plasma cutter, and then I just mount the plasma cutter hanging off the edge of the, the mill so I'm not getting any, uh, any plasma stuff on the milling machine itself. Um, originally I had looked at putting uh, the Z axis on the quill, but I was reading on CNC Zone and a guy had said that uh, he'd tried it and couldn't get any better than 10 or 20 thousandths repeatability. So uh, added it on the, the Z axis to bring the table up and down. Uh, something I added recently was one of these uh, uh, Bluetooth pendants that I just had to put a dongle in the, the PC and do some setup. And this thing is really slick. I can run the uh, run the Z up. Obviously I'm not running the Z very fast. If I had a bigger stepper motor, maybe I could, uh, could do that. But the X and the Y aren't too bad, especially when you look at the size of the stepper that I'm running. I think that's a NEMA 28 that I picked up many, many years ago and uh, for, a, for a smaller machine. And when I got this machine, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll swap these over to it, but there's the, the ounce inches are so low that I geared it down about five to one. And when I did that, I made these little clutches that I could uh, undo the clutch and still run it with the, uh, drive it by hand from the other side. Same thing in the front here. Um, I, I never did finish this piece to be able to, to drive it manually. I've only had to do that once when I had a computer problem <laughs> because most of the time it, it is just so handy to be able to punch in the X and Y that you want and just boom, go right to it. Here you can see my Y-axis motor and my Z-axis uh, right there. We'll run the, run the Y in and out. You can see it does pretty, does pretty good. I think we're like 60 or 70 inches a minute there. Unfortunately, the, the Z is not so fast, but, uh, but it does do the job. And you can see it's a substantially bigger, bigger motor. That's my CNC mill with the Mach 3 setup and stepper motors. Um, hopefully that was of some use to somebody who's considering setting up their own machine. This is where I make most of my really cool parts. And uh, yeah, you can look forward to seeing some of those in my next video.